They may be small, but these cargo fork bags have made quite an impact on my bike packing this year. The Ortlieb gravel packs are 12 litres in capacity and are fitted to your forks using a plastic rack structure. If you have mounts on your fork, the rack can be bolted on and there's metal collars provided for use on suspension forks too. The panniers lock onto the rack via two clips that are easy to slot on and off. I've been very impressed with the whole system after using it this year. I've taken them rattling up and down gravel roads and single track and the locking system has been great. They stay put with no trouble. Slotting the bags on and off the racks is easy too. There's no fiddling with securing bolts or cables. The packs are very well made using hardy and waterproof material. Despite being used in muddy, wet and boggy conditions, they performed flawlessly and everything inside remained dry and safe. It's useful to carry weight low on the bike too. Using the gravel packs helps to keep the centre of gravity low, which keeps the handling stable and confident, even on off-camber descents. 12 litres isn't loads, but it's perfect for storing tools, food and coats, with them being easily accessible to grab if you need it. I reviewed Rafa's Explore Power Reef shoes way back in March 2021, and I also featured them in a previous episode of Tech of the Month. Now at the time, I scored those shoes three and a half stars, which is by no means a bad score, but doesn't mean the shoes are amongst the very, very best we have tested. Nonetheless, they do have some key strengths, which has seen me return to the shoes time and again over the last few years. First and foremost, the fit of the shoes is tremendous, and part of this is down to the knitted upper, which is used to construct the shoes. A knitted upper is by its very nature more flexible and pliable than a solid upper made of polyurethane or synthetic leather. Now this is a good thing for me because I have got really gross old man bony feet. Lots of horrible little lumps and bumps on their outside edge and the knitted upper conforms to these beautifully. The sole is still a little bit too flexible for my taste, so whether that actually gives up anything in terms of performance is debatable. I do, however, still think that the passage, which is printed onto the insoles, is a little bit cringe. And the fact that the lugs are not replaceable on the sole of the shoe strikes me as pretty frustrating on a shoe which is designed to be walkable. Nonetheless, the shoes really fit fantastically well, and provided your pace is unhurried on a gravel ride, they come highly recommended. If you want to read my full review of the shoes, check out the link in the video description. Compact handlebar bags have quickly become one of the more popular ways and practical ways to carry trail and roadside gear. Although they broadly follow a canister-like shape, I've used a few over the years and I can safely say they vary a great deal. The Pro Discover Team handlebar bag might not be the most striking out there, but it's got a number of neat little features which I find super practical. So much so, and especially during winter, I rarely take it off my bike at all. Firstly, it has a large mesh pocket on the inside of the main compartment. It's handy to separate items and keep things organized. It also helps to protect lightweight outer layers from rubbing against things like multi-tools. It's got a tiny zip compartment hidden away in there too, and in there I've stashed emergency ice cream money. Often, those more remote villages will be cash only, so in theory, I'll hopefully have enough money to prevent the dreaded mid-ride bonk. The outside construction is sturdy enough to keep its shape whilst feeling robust enough for winter gravel riding. And finally for me, a nice little touch is this small elasticated pocket on one end. This is perfect for stuffing wrappers in if you don't want to disturb your jersey pockets. ASOS launched its first gravel collection this year, which includes a gravel specific jersey, cargo bib shorts and baggy shorts. If you want to know more about the overall range, then the link to the Tech of the Month video where I featured them is in the description. Of all the range, it was the Kia Spanza cargo bib shorts that impressed me the most. Designed with adventure riding and bikepacking in mind, the shorts feature four storage pockets, two on the thighs and two on the rear, constructed from high stretch, extremely breathable free mesh panels. The pockets are combined with ASOS's tried and tested C2 pad, with a 19mm gravel specific insert. Once broken in, the shorts have been terrific. The pockets work as prescribed and I can't feel any items I store there while pedalling. None of the pockets' elasticity has degraded and they kept items as secure as they did on day one. I've used them on plenty of long escapades this year. They were my short of choice for the West Kerno Way, a three-day off-road bikepacking route, the 327km Moonrakers and Sunseekers Audax, as well as countless training rides. 
The shorts didn't quite earn a five star rating in my review as the rear cargo pocket access is still a little awkward and there's no getting away from the £210 or $270 asking price. Otherwise, it's a home run and there's little for ASOS to work on in a second generation. With aero claims and super wide rims stealing everyone's attention, it can be easy to overlook the humble hub. Thankfully, Campagnolo makes brilliant hubs and the Levante wheels feature absolute gems. The cup and cone bearings are super smooth and easily serviceable. The free hub is also beautifully quiet and the N3W body future-proofs your hoops for 13-speed group sets. The rims won't leave you wanting either. These use the same HULC carbon ultra light molding process as the Bora Ultra WTO rims. The glossy finish with laser etched graphics also look divine. Besides the looks, the 25 mm internal width supports wide gravel tires really, really well. The two-way fit makes tubeless setup easy thanks to the deep rim well. You could say that the rim profile gives you a slight aero saving over a shallow rim, but really these wheels are all about brilliant handling, stunning looks and excellent tyre support rather than saving a few watts. I borrowed the Redshift Shock Sock Stem from Tom Marvin after he used it on his long distance ride across Europe earlier this year. I admit I was quite cynical about it. It only offers 20 millimetres of travel and I didn't think that would make any difference to the ride. However, once I got out on the trails with it, I found that it actually works really well. It's not the same as mountain bike suspension, you're still going to feel the bumps, but as a way to dampen trail chatter, it really helps significantly. The stem offers 20 millimetres of travel through a series of elastomers inside the stem. When you set the stem up, you choose between the different elastomers based on your weight, and this is all described in an easy to follow manual. The ride with the stem is definitely smoother than without it. When riding on the hoods or in the drops, the movement is fluttery and incessantly rough surfaces are dampened, reducing fatigue on long days. It also doesn't bob around, so if you're climbing or sprinting, you don't feel like you're expending energy unnecessarily. This isn't a replacement for a suspension fork, but to help make a rough trail smoother, it really works a treat. Wahoo's Element Roam V2 GPS computer was an easy choice for me this year, as it built upon the already popular first generation that I've been using for most of the year. Almost anyone who's been out for a ride with me will realise how poor my natural sense of direction is, so the Roam V2 has become a bit of a saviour for me this year. It's a very powerful training tool, but for me the navigational features and the 2.7 inch colour screen are why it makes my list. The richer display now uses eight colours, and while this is useful for training, it's the colours used in the maps which I find helpful for navigating. If I'm tired on longer rides, it's easy for me to lose concentration and miss a turn in the road. However, the Roam shows on-screen directions in a distinctive green box, as well as the bold mapping which both help me to stay on the desired path of adventure. I will say though, and this might just be me, the accompanying change of direction beep which comes from the unit isn't quite as noticeable when you're descending. Perhaps in the future we'll see some sort of variable beep volume, or maybe that's just me being picky. Finally, and let me know if you disagree with me here, like all Wahoo GPS computers, it's not touchscreen, and I love that. On other computers, I've been out in the rain trying to move data screens and make navigational decisions, and I've not had a good experience, as the weather can affect its touchscreen performance. The Roam, on the other hand, uses buttons. This might limit functionality a little bit, but keeping things simple and doing them well is often underrated. <laughs>